Welcome to puzzle solving number 7. In this series, the video is divided into three stages. Number 1, evaluation, where I evaluate the initial position of the puzzle. Number 2, calculation, where we usually use candidate moves. And number 3, a little bit of a summary to digest and highlight what was important about the puzzle we just solved. Okay, so this is the puzzle. I haven't seen this position before other than when I was getting ready to record this. And the first thing that we're going to do, as I explained in the intro of this video, is evaluation. So we're going to give ourselves some information about this position because it's not our game. And when we're solving puzzles or solving any position we just dropped in, into, sorry, we have to evaluate to, to give, give ourselves some context. The first thing I'm going to evaluate is king safety because I think this king is quite vulnerable which pretty much already tells me, tells you the answer of what I think. I think that king safety wise, probably white is scared because, or white is worse because this king on c2 is more, more vulnerable than the king on d8. Um, I'm not saying the king on d8 is ideally placed by any means. I think that if white gets one tempo, bishop g5 is going to be pretty, pretty, um, pretty deadly or scary to say the least. So this is a very sharp position. That's that's one of the things that, by the way, evaluation helps you to do. It helps you to understand what kind of position this is. Is this something that you want to maneuver, like a, a three three move long maneuver, which is for slow positions, or is this going to be quick? If you if you don't make a move, you're gonna die. Uh, I think it's the second one. I think if you don't make the right move, you're probably gonna get checkmated. Um, that's why evaluating is so important. I repeat. Okay, so king safety wise, I think white is worse, blank is better. Material balance wise, um, we have four pawns as black. White has five pawns. Uh, bishop, 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 knight, knight. White is up a knight on top of that, so black is worse in material balance, which leads me to believe even more than this is that this is going to be a very quick position. This is a very sharp position, tactical, dynamic. You have to be very quick. And other than that, is there any other thing is worth evaluating? I think some motives, maybe. For example, bishop f5 is a motive, but more of a candidate move. Uh, rook f2. This king on c2 is going to suffer in the light squares. I think that's worth evaluating a little bit. This is something very superficial to say, but that's what evaluating is for. It, in general, evaluation is super superficial. So saying that the light squares are probably going to be a problem for white is, is allowed. You, you should stock that in the back of your head um, and then maybe you can use it later on and it's going to be useful. That being said, now it's time to do the second stage of the video, which is calculation. We are going to use candidate moves, which is very useful to narrow down all the overwhelming possibilities that a position, a normal chess position has. Um, and this is something that beginners tend to 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 really struggle to understand. They see a position like this and they think, wow, well, how can masters come up with the right move in, in like, let's say five seconds or, or a minute. And the reason being is that we're not looking at every single move that is possible. The truth is that most of the moves in a chess position are just extremely bad and blunders. We normally narrow it down to like three. And there's this quote, just a as a little bit of a fun fact, there's this quote, I don't remember who said this, um, that goes, the stronger a chess player is, the less moves they see, or the, the less moves they consider. And that means it's, it's more obvious for a strong player, for a GM, to, to cancel, to get rid of some moves, to, to eliminate some moves, because it's more obvious for them which moves are bad and which moves are good. Okay, that being said, candid moves, rook f2, bishop f5, and um, I think that's it. I think other than that, I don't want to go bishop takes e3 because that's going to blunder mating 2 actually. I don't want to go queen takes d5 because after knight takes d5, I don't see anything straightforward. And you're going to say, David, that was such a mistake. Why are you considering that? Why are you wasting time? And this is not a waste of time. This is something that is, this is discipline pretty much. And and. I'm used to looking at every single forced move, and a forced move is a check, forced move are captures, threats, uh, and vulnerabilities in general. So this is a capture, I must look at this. This is something that if you don't look at, you're making a mistake. You should be strict with yourself. 
And of course, you can you can eliminate it very quickly, but I wouldn't call that a waste of time. I would call that organized and undisciplined because at some point, the, the, the day in which you have to look at this move and the right move is going to be something like this comes, then you're not going to you're going to fail to find it because you didn't get used to doing that before. OK, rook f2 and and bishop f5. Those are my candidate moves. I'm going to start with rook f2 because I like including the strongest piece in general. White has so many candidate moves. I think this, 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 king b1. We can eliminate king b1 after bishop f5. This is just game over. But king b3, that's a tough one to eliminate. I don't really see anything here. And before I start calculating in depth crazy amounts of moves, which is something inhumane and pretty, it's difficult. Like rook f2, king b3, I'm not, I'm, honestly, any chess master would struggle with this. There's so many moves. Bishop takes e3, uh, queen takes d5, knight a6, knight d7, bishop d7. Um, all of those, because we don't have so many forcing moves in that one, you have to make a move that just develops a piece. And that's pretty difficult to calculate and to understand. So rook f2, I'm going to uh, pause for a second. Postpone, I should say. And I'm going to go for bishop f5 now. Which also is kind of unclear after king b3. But at least... We, we develop pieces. And for example, after knight d7, I'm not as worried as to uh, against bishop g5 as before because I have king c8. Maybe king e8 is also fine, but okay, why would you do that to yourself? Uh, bishop f5, king b3, knight d7. That seems pretty, pretty good for black, considering that knight c5 is a checkmating threat. I don't see how... I don't see how white stops it, actually. Bishop f5, king b3, knight d7. White can play a3, yeah, but then bishop takes c3, and now that's the importance of that's the importance of knight d7 actually, because bishop f5, king d3, knight d7 not only prepares knight c5, it also defends the rook. So now this move, this move, bishop takes c3 is allowed, followed by queen takes c5. So I think I'm gonna go for that, bishop f5, move one, king b3 played by white, and now once again, I'm very excited, I'm very desperate, I'm impulsive, I'm feeling impatient to play knight d7. Because this is going according to the plan. And this is what would happen in a game. But one psychological part of chess that is so important to control is to be patient. It, it, that's what chess teaches you. How many times have you lost the game because you thought you were winning with this move, 97, and then white goes for a very extremely good sequence of moves that force you to resign? We, 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 we will never know until we really make an effort to try to find the best move for our opponent. So try to find the best defense for your opponent. After 97, what is white going to play? There must be something white can try. 97, let's see. Okay, so we're threatening knight c5. If white goes bishop g5, that's just procrastinating the problem. That's not solving anything. So we can include bishop g5, king c8, but I don't think it affects the position so much. So I'm not going to look at bishop g5. I'm going to look at other ideas. Is there anything else? That is worth considering in this position. Maybe bishop c4, because after knight c5, king takes b4 is allowed. Very, very dubious idea, I would say. But it is it is not that straightforward, so maybe bishop c4. Let's see, what else? I can play a5 in that position though. And once again, knight c5 is that's that's what we call renewing the threat. And after a3, knight c5, queen takes c4, the bishop is lost either way. So knight d7, what is white going to play? Hmm. Okay, I don't see I don't see any move for white other than a3. But after a3, we're just going to take. And this is this is winning for black. I'm gonna go ahead and play knight d7. Okay, bishop g5. As we discussed, I think that king e8 and king c8. I didn't see any straight way of losing as black after king e8. And I don't see any way of losing as black with king c8. So this is something that bugs me a little bit. But um, I must make an effort once again to try to find the answer by looking at forcing moves rather than, ah, this looks okay. Because if you go for this looks okay, you're going to lose more games. That's, that's a fact. So king e8, why? I'm going to try to prove this is wrong. So king, why is king e8 wrong? If anything, after a3, we can no longer take on c3. 
because of queen e7. Maybe that's the that's the reason. So I'm going to go king c8, which I don't see any problem with. And that's going to be the answer of the puzzle. Well done. Okay, so I think that the, the, the full answer is that after a3, we have to once again find this move. And that, that's when the puzzle truly ends. Because now bishop takes e3, we, 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 we take a bishop. And it's, it's still something that I think material-wise we're doing decently, better than before. But the king's safety is just a massive, massive problem for white. That's the reason why this is so winning. This king is so exposed, no pieces around it. And I have, I have a bishop and a queen that can join the attack and check and take even more material. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, any suggestions, any comments on this video, please let me know. And as always, have a nice day.